Today I am sharing with you guys a few dinners that I've made over the past couple of weeks. I meant to have more in this video, but I'm kind of glad that I never picked up the camera a couple times when I meant to because I'm definitely more of a relaxed what's for dinner. I bring you along with the process and that makes it for a little bit longer. <laughs> Of a video so I do have two more recipes that I'm saving that I didn't include in here and then again a couple more that I didn't film so those recipes turned out pretty good I'm gonna put them on an upcoming meal plan and we'll film that and maybe in a couple weeks or a month or so I'll share another what's for dinner so I have four dinner recipes to share with you guys today so let's go ahead and get right into them tonight's dinner we are starting if I can get that out by cooking some ground sausage. Just gonna break this up. And while my sausage is cooking, I'm going to dice up one zucchini. sausage is almost done so for the last couple minutes of cooking I'm gonna add my zucchini my sausage is done I'm adding in a jar of pasta sauce and this one is the Trader Joe's tomato basil marinara sauce it's 24 ounces and I'm also adding in a jar of Alfredo sauce this one's not as large it is let me see 16 ounces and it's Trader Joe's also just their Alfredo pasta sauce. I'm going to mix all of this together. Oh, it smells so good. And I want my zucchini to soften up a bit and really let these flavors kind of meld together. So I'm going to let this simmer on low while I get everything else ready for dinner. So I've got a pot of water here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my burner on high. I'm gonna let this come to a boil. I'm gonna add a huge pinch of salt. And then I'm also going to get my oven going. So 350, that's exactly what I needed it to preheat to. Oven just beeped and water is almost boiling. So it's time to get everything ready. So in the oven, we're gonna be cooking up these garlic and cheese breadsticks from Trader Joe's. They are so delicious. I totally just broke that one <laughs> pulling it out of the package, but it's just 350 for about four minutes, which is about as long as the ravioli takes. So I always try to get them in at the same time. And actually, I probably should have gotten a bigger pan. We're just gonna make this one work. Kind of stick them on the side here and we'll be good to go so we'll get those breadsticks in as soon as we get our ravioli so i've got the trader joe's four cheese ravioli since they cook for the same amount of time like i said about four minutes we'll use our oven as our timer so i'm going to dump that in there i've got two packages i'm gonna get my breadsticks in here and just cook them for four minutes and that'll be my timer for my ravioli as well. Okay, breadsticks are done. I'm gonna turn the sauce off as well as the ravioli, and I'm going to drain the ravioli. Okay, dinner is ready, easy peasy tonight. I'm not gonna make a salad or anything like that, just quick and easy. So we've got our cheese ravioli, our garlic and cheese breadsticks, and then our sauce that we kind of jazzed up. So we mixed the Alfredo and the marinara together, added some sausage, some ground sausage, as well as zucchini, and then some of us 
I like to top it with a little Parmesan cheese, as you can tell here. We're huge fans of cheese. So I'm gonna go ahead and make up a bowl so you guys can see what the final plate or bowl <laughs> looks like. Okay, here it is. We've got our ravioli sauce, little extra cheese, and our breadstick. That is what we were having for dinner tonight. Back with another dinner. And tonight I'm making crock pot red beans and rice. Although the rice isn't going in the crock pot. So we're really just making beans and sausage. <laughs> I've got three cans of dark red kidney beans in here. I did drain them. Um, the cans were about 15 ounces each. I'm also adding in some sausage. Maybe about half a pound. I got this sausage at a home and garden show and it doesn't really have measurements like ounces or how many pounds or net weight, nothing on it. But really just add however much you want. And this is like a beef kielbasa, but really you can do any, any kind of andouille if you like more of a spicy a flavor. But we're just working with what we already had in the freezer. Going in next is three ribs of celery that I diced up. Then one green bell pepper, also diced. And a small onion, diced up. If you have some fresh garlic, you could totally mince that up. About two garlic cloves. I have this and I need to make sure I'm using it up. So I'm doing like two heavy overflowing teaspoons of garlic. Actually, I'm gonna do another like half. I love garlic. A teaspoon of salt. I'm not gonna measure the chili powder, not too much. I Really just all the seasoning is to taste, right? What you like. I'm just gonna sprinkle it all over the top there. And last thing going in the crock pot is about a tablespoon of W sauce. Pour that on top there, and that's W sauce. <laughs> if you've never watched a cooking video of mine before. Okay, so I'm gonna stir all of this up, get all of those seasonings, covering all the other ingredients, getting my lid on, and I have it set to high and for four hours. Once it's been about three and a half hours, I'm gonna get back in this kitchen and we're going to get everything else prepped that we're also having with dinner tonight. We still have about an hour before my crock pot time is done, but I'm gonna go ahead and start getting everything else ready. That way it's already about the same time. So I picked up this cornbread mix from Trader Joe's. I've never tried their cornbread, so we're gonna go ahead and give that a try. I'm basically just mixing the ingredients or the mix that's in this box with one egg, a half a cup of oil, and then three quarter cups of milk. I'm gonna go ahead and start my oven for 350 while I'm mixing it together. Everything's mixed per the directions. It never beat like the liquid stuff first, but that's what the directions said. It was the oil, the milk, the egg, beat that, and then add the dry mix in. And my fingers are a little icky because I was trying to, and they're clean. Oh, see, that one's coming apart. But there's like so many clumps in here. The directions said <laughs> to just mix it until it was moistened. So that's all I did. And then I started trying to get out some clumps that I saw, but it was just creating more clumps. So I, I stopped <laughs> and hopefully 
me it's fine but my oven is preheated to 350 and these need to bake for 40 minutes while that cornbread is in the oven i'm gonna go ahead and prep the salad so typically when i make a salad the bulk of it like the salad itself is very basic i just use either a salad mix I'm using romaine. I bought this in like a six pack from Sam's Club. And then my my kids like it to be bite sized. So I just did like three or four. I don't even I wasn't even counting. Um but like they just like it completely bite sized. So I just chop it up as small as I can. All of these were rinsed already because we've been having sandwiches the last few days. And then I'm also going to chop up a cucumber and a tomato or not just a tomato but some some cherub tomatoes to go in here um, and then everybody jazzes it up with different kinds of like add-ins and sides and stuff that we have so um, you guys will see that if you have if you've seen a video of mine already like a what's for dinner you already know what all I pull out or put out with it but if you're new you'll see all the extras that everybody can add in but as far as like the salad itself our like just easy go-to is cucumber, tomato, and whatever, you know, lettuce, romaine lettuce, salad mix I happen to pick up to go with it. Basic salad mix done. We're now at maybe like the 30 minute mark. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my rice. I did rinse it, so it's gonna be a bigger pain to get it out of here. <laughs> it's all wet. But I do like to use my Instant Pot for rice. So I do have two cups. Sorry, you guys can't see in there. I don't have you propped on anything. Two cups of rice in there. And then I'm going to add in, this is a two cup measuring cup. So I've got two cups and then another three quarter cup of water. I've got my lid closed, knob, ceiling, not venting. And then mine has a rice button. If yours doesn't, it's just low pressure for 12 minutes and that's it. It is gonna take maybe 10 to come up to pressure. So now it's coming up to pressure. Once it reaches that pressure, it will start the 12 minute countdown. Typically it's close to about 20 minutes for rice. Okay you guys, dinner is ready. Our little buffet line is over here tonight. So we've got our red beans and sausage mixture. I just turned everything off so it's still bubbling and nice and hot. Our rice. I did pull out soy sauce because two of the kids are most likely going to put soy sauce on their rice. They're not going to mix it or have the red beans and rice on top of it. They're going to have it on the side. Cornbread. Okay, you guys, this cornbread is super flaky. Like I, here's my my plate right here. I wanted to show you guys the cornbread. So I actually like my cornbread on the side. I know a lot of people like to mix it in with their beans, but I just like to put some butter on it. I, need, I still need to do that, but it's like falling apart, super, super flaky. So it would actually be really good if you liked it mixed into that. But we've got our cornbread and butter, and then here's all the salad fixing. So we've got our basic salad mix here that I whipped up. I pulled out some shredded cheese, bacon pieces. These are our like two go-to salad dressings. So we've got, we have ranch and then the Italian 
um, the Olive Garden Italian dressing, sunflower seeds, and croutons. And on mine, I just put sunflower seeds and the Italian dressing, but this is what we are having for dinner tonight. Dang, Mark heard me turn the camera on. I was trying to catch him singing, you guys. He's, he's singing, getting ready to cook dinner. <laughs> he's prepping himself, I guess. So dinner tonight, super easy. Mark is home. So that makes it even easier because I only have to do half of it and he does the other half. So what he's going to do is cook up these bags of vegetable fried rice. They are from Trader Joe's, super easy. Just heat them up on the skillet. Maybe add a little soy sauce, salt and pepper. I'll pull that out. And then I've had this in my freezer forever. The all natural shaved beef steak, also from Trader Joe's. And I'm gonna have him cook this up with some teriyaki sauce. And we will have that as like our protein. Probably add it into the vegetable fried rice after it's done and just let it all cook together. Or I don't, I don't know yet, we'll see. Um, or just keep it on the side so everybody can kind of do their own thing. So while he's doing that, I'm actually going to make a ramen salad to have on the side. That's what you guys are gonna see, like the portion of that. You guys will just see this already done since Mark and I are tag teaming it tonight. Okay, you guys, I have no butter in my butter dish. You're welcome. So <laughs> I wasn't gonna call you out. <laughs> So, I had to pull some from the fridge. I'm doing about four, that, that's actually probably like three. Three tablespoons, not measuring. Just getting that in there. I'm gonna let this melt. So, I've got a bag of slivered almonds. I'm just pouring the whole thing in there. I've got my heat on medium high. And then I took a bag of ramen and I just crunched it up all like that. Make sure you take the little seasoning packet out. And I'm tossing that in there. And I'm just gonna let this cook until the ramen and the almonds are slightly browned. Nice, nice and toasty with that butter. Okay, I just turned the heat off. It's getting a little brown there. And we're actually going to move out of the way. This Mark's over there. See, he's working on the rest of dinner. <laughs> so we're gonna go to another counter. That way he's got more space to move around. Bye. Bye. So I've got two layers of paper towels here and I'm just gonna let these drain while I move on to the rest of my salad prep. I'm so excited. I haven't made this salad in a long time. The kids probably don't even remember it, but they have been loving the ramen the last year or two. I know it's been longer than a year or two since I've made it. That I think they'll be interested in trying it, knowing that it has ramen in it. So. I should have spread that out a little better, but I'm just gonna let it drain on my paper towels here. Starting to get my salad together, I cut up some romaine lettuce. A spring mix would be really good in, it, in this. I do have a little bit of spring mix down here, but as I was going through the package that I bought, half of it was like slimy and gross. So I pulled out what I could and then just had to toss the rest. Glad that I picked up the extra romaine lettuce for the week. So I just cut up um, about two and a half of those romaine hearts. Got it in a bowl. Adding a cucumber. Next up is some green onion. I just diced up an entire bunch. I think it was a smaller bunch. I think about six maybe little green onions in there. Got some tomatoes in there. I have them and now I have this huge bag of pine nuts. I'm not adding the entire bag. This is just kind of however many you want. So I'm just gonna go over the top a couple times, sprinkle those in there. Probably actually ended up being about half of the bag. And same thing with some dried cranberries. Don't really measure, just however many you want. I'm gonna do less cranberries than pine nuts. You gotta get your fingers off my ramen. Uh-huh, everybody hears you crunching on them. What are you doing, sampling? I like to eat when I cook. Uh -huh. I love burgers. Okay, I did drain this large can of mandarin oranges. I'm gonna plop that in there and add my ramen and almonds. Oh. Okay, there's the salad. 
I'm gonna mix that up, but we do still need to make the dressing. For the dressing, I've already got two tablespoons of sugar in my little, I got this from the Dollar Tree and I love it. When I'm making dressing, I just put it all in there, mix it up, shake it, and then it's got the little spout that I can pour it out. And so I've got two tablespoons of sugar in there. Oopsies, I spilled that a lot. Adding in a quarter cup of rice vinegar that I, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I totally spilled that all over my countertop. <laughs> Hush your mouth. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear it from the peanut gallery. Oh my gosh. That's what I'm at. Uh, yeah. I've got Mark on salad mixing duty because he's done faster than I am. It takes longer when you gotta film. Okay, also adding a quarter cup of canola oil, which I did not spill. Just pat myself on the back for that. <laughs> I'll pat myself on the back. Oh. <laughs> but thanks. Okay, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of sesame seed oil, and just about half a teaspoon of pepper. So, if, I mean, if you didn't have a little container like this, you could totally just mix this in a bowl with a whisk. But now, I'm just gonna shake it up. And it's just, it's not, it doesn't make very much. If you really loved dressing on your salad, you could double this or add a little bit more. All right, this is just a light dressing to go on top. Mmm, yummy, look at that. Baby did such a good job. Yes. You say I guess? Yeah. It's kind of hard when you're making a salad <clears throat> to get it all mixed up, huh? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna take the dressing and just drizzle it. This is something that you do have to eat because the dressing is going to wilt everything, but this is so yummy. We'll definitely be eating this up, and then I'm just gonna lightly mix it up, and there you have it. Super delicious ramen salad. And this is what we're having for dinner tonight. So we've got the ramen salad here, the fried rice, and the teriyaki shaved beef steak on top. I cannot wait to dig in. Another night of dinner, we are starting off with a pound of ground beef. And I also have my oven preheating to 400 degrees. I'm just gonna break this up a little bit. I do have my skillet on like a medium high. And whenever I'm cooking with ground beef, I like to add garlic and onion powder. Um, this time I'm just gonna be adding garlic because I'm adding onion powder in, in the next couple steps. I don't want to overdo it. So I've just got my garlic powder in here and I'm going to let this brown up a bit. I'm also adding in one small diced onion and that way this gets nice and soft as the ground beef cooks. While my ground beef is cooking, I'm gonna work on a sauce that I'm going to be adding to it. And if you guys, you guys might be able to have some kind of an idea of what I'm making with these ingredients, but I'm starting off with adding one cup of ketchup to my bowl. Then we've got a teaspoon of W sauce, two teaspoons of onion powder, and a quarter cup of brown sugar. I'm gonna mix these all together. Ground beef is almost done as well as the oven, it is almost done. I might need to grab, here we go. Once it gets to the end of this, it has to kind of be at an angle to spray it out. Okay, so I'm just greasing my baking sheet here and I've got this Pillsbury pizza crust. So I'm gonna open this up. If you guys are ever like scared, this is how, I don't know how long I've been doing this, but I know a lot of people like push or use a spoon and it pops and it scares them. What I do is I use my counter you just hit it a couple times and it pops right open. No, no scaring needed. And actually, I wonder if I need my bigger pan. Let me see here. Cause so I was hoping to just make a small one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You could spread this out and put it in a, like a full size baking sheet if you wanted to, but I really don't need that much. So, and we want a, a thicker crust. 
But if you wanted a thinner crust for your pizza, you could totally do that. So I'm just gonna kind of mold it to fit in my pan here, kind of put up the edges just a little bit. And once my oven is done or preheated to that 400 degrees, I'm going to bake this for eight minutes. My pizza crust is in the oven. My ground beef is completely cooked through. I'm adding in, I turned the heat on my stove top down to low and I'm adding in my sauce mixture. I'm gonna stir this up and I'm just gonna let this summer, simmer on low while the pizza crust cooks. And if you guys haven't guessed yet, we are making sloppy Joe pizzas. So I saw this recipe just pop up on my Pinterest feed not too long ago and I enjoy sloppy Joes. And I was like, oh, that's a little twist on it. We're gonna try that out. The kids like pizza, I like pizza. So. That is what we are trying for dinner tonight. I'll have the recipe that I am following um, linked in the description box if you guys want to check it out. But all right, that is nice and mixed in here. So like I said, I turned the heat down to low and I'm just gonna let this simmer while that pizza crust cooks. Now that I'm looking at this, I totally should have used the bigger pan. <laughs> uh, but we're just gonna go for it. So this cooked for eight minutes it definitely helps not to have like a gooey bottom so definitely don't skip that step i'm going to pour my sloppy joe mixture on top all right and then i'm just going to spread it out as even as i can oh okay see i thought it was going to be like crazy thick but no this is fine okay excellent so far so good i mean you could definitely use a bigger pan you, you're just you know gonna have thinner slices, but this is good. I wanted it to still have that like sloppy Joe sandwich feel, so I don't know. I just thought the big pan was stretching it a little too thin for my taste. So I have like this little piddly bag of um, sharp cheddar cheese that we need to use up. So I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle that on here. Let me break this one up a little bit more. And then I'm also going to be using a mozzarella cheese. And I'm gonna go a little bit more heavy on the mozzarella cheese. Just kind of really covering the entire top with it. Not measuring, just eyeballing it. And like everybody's around tonight. So if you guys hear all the, the background noise, hopefully it's not too loud. I don't think it is. All right, and then last step. I am super excited for this step. Crispy fried onions, what? I actually, I bought the big bag because I was like, you know what, if I like this on here, the next time we make sloppy joes, if it's in like sandwich form, normal, I'm just gonna add these in with my sandwich because that this just sounds really good. So again, not, I'm, an, I'm not gonna put this one on here. I'm gonna put it back in the bag because that's like a big mama jamo. So I'm just gonna take like the smaller onions and sprinkle those on top. My oven is still at 400 degrees. All right, that looks good. And I'm gonna put this back in for another eight minutes. I had a little bite. It definitely yummy. Cannot wait for everybody to <laughs> dig in. Always serve our sloppy joes with pickles. I was gonna make french fries, but I was like, you know what? This is, I feel like this is gonna be pretty filling. So that's it, just nice and simple. A sloppy joe pizza and some pickles for <laughs> our dinner tonight. All right, so that is just a few dinners that we have had, like I said, over the past few weeks or a couple weeks in my house. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you are new. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I will see you guys in the next video, which should be, fingers crossed, I just have to sit down and edit it. It's just my week is a little crazy. Um, it should be a couple breakfast ideas that I want to share with you guys. So be on the lookout for that video. Bye.